3.6 polynomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. We're going to be looking at factoring these types of trinomials. The main difference between this and the previous section is now we're going to have a coefficient in front of the x squared. We're now going to have trinomials that look like this. With the main difference being that coefficient in front of the x. Now we always did have a coefficient in front of that x squared, but it was a 1 and it was easier to factor because of it. Let's get into some examples. Let's try to factor this example. 3x squared minus 13x minus 10. These first couple of steps are going to be the same whether you're factoring using the box method or decomposition. Your first step, your first step is to check all of your terms. Is there something you can factor out of all three? If you can, do so. It'll make your life a lot easier in the end. But in this case, I can't. There's nothing that factors nicely out of all three. Our next step, and this is the first difference from what we were doing before, is instead of just using this minus 10, I want to use that minus 10 and this 3 right here. So the last term and the coefficient of the first term. I'm going to go 3 times minus 10, which gives me minus 30. So now I'm looking for two factors that multiply together to give me minus 30, but add or subtract to give me minus 13. Now we're working the same way as we did before when we didn't have a coefficient in front of the x squared. The only difference is this piece right here. All right, so our factors of minus 30, well, we can go minus 10 and plus 3. Those multiply together to give minus 30, but they add together to give minus 7, not the one we're looking for. Let's try minus 15 and plus 2. Those multiply together to give minus 30, and when I add them together, I end up with minus 13. That gives me my middle coefficient. Perfect. There is my set of factors. I'm going to continue factoring this using the box method. This first term goes into the first box. The last term goes into the bottom right-hand box. And then I'm going to use these two factors and that variable for the other two boxes. So I've got a minus 15x for this one and a plus 2x for that one. Now let's factor out each column and each row. From both of those two, I can only take out an x. From that column, I can factor out a minus 5. When I go and look at this row, I'm seeing I can take out a 3x. Just as a reminder here, Make sure you factor out the greatest possible factor, the biggest factor that you can take out. And last but not least is this row. I can factor out a plus 2. When I look at it, there are my two binomials, my factors. A difference to pay attention to, if you have a factor in front of the x squared, that means one or both of your binomials is also going to have a factor in front of the x, and not just an invisible one like we have on this one over here. Let's write out the steps that we took to get here. My first step is you check for any common factors in all three terms of your polynomial, and if there are any, you factor them out. There weren't any in this one. Next step, multiply the first and last coefficients. So we multiplied that 3 and that minus 10. We're going to use that new number, in this case a minus 30, to look for factors that multiply to give that and add together to give your middle term. And last, continue solving either using the box method or decomposition. And last, if you pulled out any common factors, then those are going to be factors in your answer. I'll show you how that works in the next example. Let's do another example. First step, look for any common factors. As I look at this, I realize I can factor out a 3 from all three terms. So let's do that. When I factor a 3 out, 18 divided by 3 is going to give me 6x squared. 3x divided by 3 is going to give me a plus 1x. You don't have to write the 1 in, but we would assume that it's there. And then minus 3 divided by 3 is going to give me a minus 1. A common mistake is when people look at something like this, they say, well, I factored it out, so there must be nothing there. That's not true. Because you're dividing it out, 3 divided by 3 is going to give you a 1. I factored out a common factor of 3. What I'm going to continue doing now is I'm going to continue factoring the part that's inside the brackets. And for now, I'm going to forget about that common factor out front. I just can't forget to add it back into our final answer, because it is one of the factors. 
All right, I'm taking my first term and my last term. So we're looking at six times minus one, which gives me a minus six. Now I'm looking for two things to multiply to give me minus six, but add together to give me plus one. Minus two and plus three, when I put them together, there we go, plus one. There's my set of factors. Let's finish this off using the box method. Now remember, I'm going back to the trinomial that's in the brackets, not my original question. I'm done with that original piece. Go find my factors, which was a minus 2, and then I pull the variable from that middle term, and then I've got a plus 3, same variable. Let's factor. From both of those, I can take a 3x. From this column, I can factor out a minus 1. Remember, even if it looks like you can't factor anything out, you can always at least factor out a 1, or in this case, a minus 1, because our first term is negative. From this row, I'm going to take out a 2x. And from this row, I think all I can factor out is a 1. Do a double check, multiply everything through to make sure you've got the proper answers, and then write out your final solution. And last but not least, don't forget, you have a common factor here. Now is the time to put it back into our answer. If you were to multiply out this whole expression, you'd end up right back at our original question. And that is my final answer. Let's do one last example. This one I'm going to finish using the decomposition method. But once again, first couple steps are the same. Doesn't matter which method you're using. Let's look for a common factor. In this case, I can factor a 2 out. All right, I'm going to ignore the 2 for now, but I'm coming back for it later. I'm going to take that first coefficient and that last term, multiply them together. 10 times 2 gives me 20. So I'm looking for factors of 20, so numbers that multiply together to give 20, but add together to give plus 9. So if I try 10 and 2, if I add those together, I end up with 12. That doesn't work. Let's do, well, 5 and 4. That gives me a plus 9. Those are the factors I'm looking for. So I'm going to rewrite our inside part. That inside trinomial, 10x squared doesn't change, but I'm going to break that 9x down into plus 5x and plus 4x. And then plus 2 doesn't change. Split it up into two parts. I'm going to do each part separately. Front half, I can factor 5x out of both of those. Uh, 10x squared divided by 5x should give me 2x. And 5x divided by 5x doesn't leave me with nothing. It leaves me with a plus 1. And the last part, when I look at the 4x plus 2, I can factor a plus 2 out of both, which should leave me with 2x plus 1. Great. The terms in the brackets are exactly the same. So that is going to be the first term of my answer. And the second binomial, that's going to be my leftovers right here. 5x plus 2. Last but not least, don't forget to go back for that common factor. There is my factored trinomial.